Buenos nachos and welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're gonna be taking a look at this Xbox right here. Let's go ahead and see this thing will play some games. I don't think it recorded it, but it does this wavy looking thing and that's gonna be indicative of failing capacitors. It is not ejecting, okay? No. So at this point, what do you do? You have a defective DVD drive. You don't want to go through the trouble of cleaning and greasing the rails on this thing. And of course, if you have a laser problem, it's probably going to be down near impossible to find a working one. You could buy a new drive, but that might cost you twice as much as the console. All right, all right, I'm, I'll answer the question that I have posed. We're going to eliminate the DVD drive. No one seems to have voided the warranty on this console, so let's go ahead and void the warranty. And of course, I'm not going to be taking care on preserving the look of these labels. No, sir. Why would I do that? Now there goes the value of this thing. It's no longer worth $40. Of course, with the condition this thing's in, it's probably worth even less than that, but not for long. Well, you're quite chipper today. You must have had quite a bit of coffee. Why, yes, I did, actually. Thanks for asking. All right, now, of course, we have six screws to dislodge from this console. That's one. Dose. I've lost count because I actually did remove two already. So technically we only have two more. That was Cinco and this is Space, also known as Six. And of course, there it blows. So let me go ahead and have some coffee. We can't be all nice and stable while we're soldering. We have to be extra jittery. All right, we're gonna continue with removing all the screws and cables. We'll be fast forwarding. All right, so we're, uh, we're pretty much all the way down in this console. And for those inquiring minds, this is a 1.0 console because it has the daughter board for the USBs. I think you're all in for a little treat. Probably should get my fire extinguisher before I do this, but uh, <laughs> we gotta live life on the wild side a couple of times, right? So here we go. If you've seen some of my other episodes, you'll remember this. We're gonna go ahead and spray some alcohol in here for added effect. I think it's safe to say it's not safe to be plugging that in in that condition. And of course that was with me spraying with alcohol, so you know things would have to get pretty bad in order for it to burn your house down if it was, uh, if that was a thing back in the days. What else is wrong with this thing? As you've probably guessed, our friend the clock capacitor has failed. Looks like I got a little ahead of myself. We actually don't have to remove the motherboard out of this console unless of course you need to take care of some capacitors. We're gonna be installing that DVD elimination module. So that's what it looks like and you'll have to get a a connector like this one and of course you'll need two resistors 10k and 20k they'll be 0805 size I think I got eighth of a watt so whatever you think you need and of course you'll need a 3d printed piece like this if you want to have the front of the console looking nice with the Xbox emblem that used to go across the DVD drive all right so let's go ahead and assemble this thing and of course we're gonna be turning on the vacuum you're gonna to want to tack down at least one or two sides before you completely start tacking down everything. We'll of course be using our Hako FX-951 soldering iron, and of course the T15 D24 soldering iron tip. You could probably get away with 330C for your soldering iron temperature. Looks like we have a couple of bridges. Well, I've had my coffee, it's up to you to decide if it's kicking in. Let's go ahead and clear up the soldering joint problems. And of course, for inquiring minds, I am not using ROHS compliant solder, I am using leaded solder. And when you're done, you should have something that looks like that. Now we need the two resistors, the 10K and the 20K. Now, if you have your module positioned like that, the 10K goes on the left-hand side. And of course, you'll be using some good old-fashioned tweezers, which you may have acquired through our affiliate link, which is down below. And of course, this resisti will be installed right here. And yes, I did call it a resisti, not a resistor. Let's go ahead and get that soldered on. That way we don't mix it up with the 20K. Not that you couldn't really tell the difference per se. I find it's easiest to just pre-solder one side, though this is gonna be the challenge of a lifetime because we're working on a platform that moves. Probably wouldn't hurt to have some help in hands.
Of course, you may also be asking yourself why I'm not using the preheater with some liquid solder to install this. Well, reason being is I want to show it that it's possible to do this with your basic tools without having to buy anything extravagant. Well, I guess it's finally time. I'm breaking down. We're going to have to add some flux. Of course, this thing's already just filled to the max with flux for some unknown reason. Man, why won't that pad get solder on it? Jeez. Never seen that many difficulties in installing a simple resistor. And now for that 20K. I was about ready to say, man, that glare is so bad, but it's, uh, it's normal to not be able to see it when it's upside down. Of course, that would happen. Who knew? Ah, see, we get lucky here, and this thing actually stays. All right, looks like we got it. And, of course, we'll clean this off with some good old-fashioned alcohol and the brush of the tooth. And we'll get our good old fashioned can of compressed air right over here next to our illustrious 3D printed R3 logo. Now to install this thing. And this thing's only gonna go in one way because it is keyed. And that's how it'll look when it's in the Xbox. Of course, I do see a joint that looks like it could be touched up. I just can't help myself, so we'll go ahead and take care of that real quick. All right, and now that you have it installed in your Xbox, we can go ahead and plug it in, provided the thing doesn't burst into flames. And you'll be presented with a particular error, error 11. And the only way to get around this is to install a BIOS that has a no DVD patch. You could also use a Stellar mod chip, which automatically detects and takes care of the issue with the no DVD. Personally, I'll probably be installing the Stellar into this console, but that's not gonna be in this video since I've already shown that a couple of different times. The last thing to do is to remove the bezel from the DVD drive and install it onto this 3D printed platform. It just snaps in just like that and it'll go right here. And you would use the two screws that hold the DVD drive and use that to attach this 3D printed piece. Then you can seal up the console and it's good to go. The DVD elimination project can be found on GitHub and it is created by Wired Opposite. And a link to the project can be found in the description below. If you found this video helpful or useful, please remember to leave us a like and subscribe. And thanks for watching. Until next time.